on this RV decor series, I'm gonna show you how I installed this brick in our RV, not this one. RV decor series, I've started having some people reach out to me and commonly decor reached out and wanted to know if I wanted to do a video on their 3D tile. So rather than just jumping all in and saying, yes, I am in, I asked them to send me some samples. They sent me quite a few samples and well, when I got the product, I thought, oh wait, I know our community would absolutely love seeing this installed. So then I had to figure out where was I gonna install it. Now, my first thought was I want it on the fireplace. This calls for a brick. And I already had peel and stick wallpaper behind the TV. So I thought this for sure would be a place that I would want to install this. Then I was like, hmm, I wanna put a touch of it somewhere else. Then I walked in the door and I was like, uh, I think I wanna add an accent wall here as you walk in the RV as well. So I ordered it and I got it in and then I installed it and here is the process I did. For this project, you just need a straight edge, X-Acto knife or some kind of knife to cut it, scissors, and then I have the alcohol and a lint-free rag to clean the space. For me, alcohol is the best thing to clean and get a residue off and it doesn't take long to dry. I do want to real quick before I get started, I don't know if you can see or not, it has like a, a real cool texture to it and it is very flexible. Because it's so flexible and thin, it will be easy to cut and this is perfect for your camper because it's so lightweight. We're gonna give that brick look without the brick weight. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is prepare the space and I think I'm gonna do behind the TV first and then I'm gonna do behind the fireplace second. Get this wallpaper off. Hey, it's not peeling the finish off. I am going to pull these strips off just because I want my brick to go all the way to the edge. I really would like to have a little flathead screwdriver, but I like it fine with this crowbar real quick. So that's what we're gonna use to get this off. I've got all those nails done, and then we're gonna start on the bottom and work our way up on this one. I have my alcohol in this little bottle that I get at the Dollar Tree, just cause it's easier than trying to pour it out on the rag. Because there's a wall over here, we're gonna cut these tabs off so that it fits flush so we don't have little pieces over there. So let's cut these tabs off. Behind the TV is done. Uh, that was super easy. I'm a messy, messy project person. All right, so I went and got Bill. I know I could figure this out, but he had already taken them out before, so I wanted him to show us how to take out the drawers. I thought that that was it, but I couldn't get it to come out. Oh, look at you. I just didn't, I just didn't want to break it. One you have to push up, the other one you have to push down. Oh, I got you. I was pushing them both up. So I've decided I want this done, but I'm gonna do my wall first and then come back and make sure that I have enough for this because I don't know how they figured this and it's really gonna take like a whole tile and I'm gonna run a bunch. So I wanna make sure I have enough for the wall before I do this. So we're gonna go start on the wall. This is gonna be a hard, um, <laughs> hard one to film. Yay, it's level. If it was straight across the bottom, I would start at the bottom and go up. But because there's so many intricate cuts down there, I could get my level off. I just think for my purposes that it's gonna be better to start at the top and go down. But normally I would recommend starting at the bottom and going up. recommend this, not safe.
Now, while I've learned that I like the scissors way better than I do the X-Acto knife, I make the measurements, I mark it on the back of the tile, and then I take the scissors and cut along those lines. Okay, I just learned something and I didn't notice it over there and I guess it's because the light's coming down. Let me see if I can get a camera and show you. I put up this tile and I don't know if you can tell or not, but it looks totally different than that one. And I was like, why does those look so different? Look, I flipped it around and it totally changes the way it looks. So there is obviously a top and a bottom. I didn't notice it over there, but I guess the way that the light's coming down on here, you can totally tell that they're totally different. Wrong way, right way. That is crazy. So what I'm learning is if you can line this up in like one of the little squares, and then you just go ahead and press that down and then go to your next section, and line that up and press that down. That's been the best way that I could get it. And because it is flexible, even if you're off just a touch, you're able to move it around and get it where you need it. And then you just press it all the way down. All right, I'm gonna keep going down the wall. It's looking really good. Getting old really stinks. I used to never have to have up close glasses and now I can't see. So this is my scrap pile and I'm able to use this piece to cut my next piece. So that's the importance of having your scrap pile and looking at it first so that you're not cutting up whole tiles to make your product stretch further. Also, every time you cut a piece of tile, you're gonna wanna dry fit it, make sure it fits before you stick it up. See, like I need to trim just a little bit off of this corner right here. Another thing, you want this to butt up against the piece. You do not want them to overlap. They seem so much better when you butt them up. I accidentally overlapped a little bit up there, I guess just because I couldn't see very good. And you can definitely tell where I overlapped it. But this sticks so good, it was not coming off after I stuck it. This one's easy to come off. It just unclips. You get a little screwdriver and you could take all these little wires off, but I opted not to do that. I cut along the bottom of this brick till I got to that hole so that I could just slide the cable in and then I will screw it back on. And then this seam will be hidden under the brick. Those are back up. And when I've been measuring, I measure for the longest one and then I mark from there, if that'll help you. Uh, I've just noticed that it makes a big difference. Then we're gonna get down into the hard part, the steps. It's gonna be lots of cuts. Oh. I do love the fact that it is textured. I mean, I don't know if the camera even shows you how textured this is, but it looks like I'm putting a brick. What you thinking? Looks like brick, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I love it. I think it looks really good. I just took the screws off. I kind of cut a hole so we could get it up there, get it up there, and then I took the knife and finished cutting out the hole. I make sure that if I'm gonna do anything, I'm gonna cut too long first and then trim. Because you can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. All right, 
let's see if all my measurements I just made are good, but we're gonna cut it a little bit bigger than what I think we need. All right, perfect. That is it. We are all tied up close and personal right now, aren't we? Ooh. That was the hardest one, and that's because it's such a tight space. All right, I'm gonna finish up this little bit, and then we'll start on the fireplace. All right, the wall is done. I uh, love how this looks. Pretty excited. All right, I will, um, I'm gonna work on this around the fireplace and see how I wanna get it done. I may not be able to finish the video today, which is normal that it takes several days to finish videos for me, but at least I've got that wall done and behind the fireplace done, and oh my gosh, I love it, love it, love it. And plus two, if I don't finish this today, this will give a few days and some extreme heat. We can make sure that it's still gonna stick because that's something that's very important. I'm gonna finish the fireplace and then I will come back to y'all and finish up this video. I got it all installed. And if you see, these are painted now. And I'll show you a picture. I took a picture and these were so dark that it looked funny. And then I couldn't put this tile on top of the drawer because then again, that would look funny because of the edge. But I almost, that was almost what I did. I almost put this on top of this. But I was really probably seriously to do it right one piece short. And so I didn't want to piece a drawer in. So I painted it. I started off a little lighter than this and kept getting darker, and I probably could even go a darker shade, but this particular shade, I already had paint that was in the house, and this is what color I had, and I didn't have to buy anything new. I have to admit, this was super easy to put up and install. I feel like because it was 3D, it made it easier to install. I love the texture. It gives it dimension. Now, because I'm gonna be totally honest with you about every project that I do, over at the fireplace, none of it has come up. I've had it up about a week and it's still sticking and works perfect. On this wall, I've had a few pieces, the corners are wanting to curl up, but all I did was grab my glue gun and took the corner and put the glue under it and pushed it back. And because this is textured, oh, there's a bee, there's a bee. And because this is textured, you can't see the glue bubbling up underneath it like you would if it was flat wallpaper. So that's what I've done. And I, like I said, I've only had three or four little spots that come up, the corner did, and I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, I cleaned it and everything. Then again, you probably see sweat pouring off with me right now. It's been 100 this week in high humidity, so this is probably the perfect test for it to see if it's gonna stick. Commonly Decor has been gracious enough to give you a 10% off discount if you use this code for me. There's a link in the description box and if you use this coupon code, you can get 10% off of your order. They have some beautiful different tiles. I went with the brick because that was more of my rustic farmhouse feel. On my coffee bar, I think that brick would look beautiful, but now we really like our beadboard, but that would look really cool. I already have a tile around my stove, but this tile says that it's heat and water resistant as well. I, you know, I absolutely love how this turned out. And uh, I didn't record the painting process of the doors because I don't know that this is going to stay. I didn't really, all I did was I put some chalk paint on there and then I put regular paint over the top because I've painted furniture like that in the house. It has stuck way better than anything else that I've ever done. So I'm not saying that's a process. I'm not a professional. I don't know about that, but that's how I painted. Where I took this trim down, this met up against this really good, but I liked how it looked with the trim on it. So I did put the trim back up that I had taken off to start with. I don't know if y'all can see or not, but I just, I feel like I am just bullets and it's not going to let up anytime soon. So I knew I had to go ahead and try to finish up this video. If y'all 
have any products that y'all want me to try or interested in, leave me a comment below. Maybe I could try to look into seeing about getting some of those products and trying them for you. Or if you have any ideas for future videos for the RV decor and organization series, because y'all are loving this series. Till next time, like and subscribe.